Greetings, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, I had some connection issues. Um, hopefully, didn't break up on you. But uh, again, uh, greetings and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 27th day of February. And it's Tuesday, 2024. And today's topic uh, for the Baptist Bread is another one of these, a look at the Master, the last one in the series of messages on this topic. And the subtitle is Those on Our Side. And so... I'll give you all the times that we went through these messages here on this series of a Look at the Master uh, by Brother Tim Green. And uh, started way back in November on the 17th and went on different days. And after I get done with this, I'll probably put it into a, a playlist on the YouTube channel. So, amen. All right. But before I get started on a lot of that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can know is um, Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for you. And him being your personal Lord and Savior. And having a good and solid relationship after you've trusted him. And um, learn to be obedient and be Christ-like and all that stuff while we're on the earth. And be a bold witness. And it's very important that you know who Jesus is and why he came down to this earth the first time. He didn't come down here to set up a kingdom. Of course, eventually he will set up an earthly kingdom, but that's not why he came down here the first time. He came down here to die for our sins. He didn't come here to start a religion. He didn't come here to tell you to flip a bunch of beads or to worship to some man or whatever. Or, or I mean, yeah, he did a bunch of healing and he did um, all that stuff and a bunch of good things while he was down here, but his main purpose was to go to that cross so he could be reconciled with us. And that is what saves your soul. It's not water baptism. It's not going to church. It's not flipping beads. It's not praying to Mary. It's not confessing your sins to a priest or a pope or anything like that. It's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Even Mary said um, when they were in um, Cana and, he, and they were wanting to know um, about uh, what to do. And she said to go to Jesus. And so you got to go straight to him in order to get to the Father. Amen. So that is important that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. And uh, so hope you understand that. And a good uh, book to start in if you want to know more about salvation and eternal life is John. And Jesus said you must be born again. That's having the second birth. And that uh, he is the mediator between God and uh, man. The man, uh, um, man Christ Jesus. And so... He wants to save your soul today, so hope you'll call upon him and trust him. And then that's just the beginning of it, not the end. And then after you get saved, then he'll show you how to live a Christ-like life and get in your Bible and get into a good Bible-believing church and to have a good, solid relationship with him and God the Father. And amen. So, all right. So now that we explain that to you, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the scripture song for today, for the 27th, and this is Philippians 2.13, and so let's go to the book of Philippians here, in chapter 2, and look at this really quick, in its entirety, and get some context here, because it's always good to read the Bible, and get the context of the chapter, and all that, so, if it's not a too lengthy chapter, that is, and if it is, then we just try to do like an outline, so Philippians 2, and there is 30 verses here. So um, let's go ahead and start in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each uh, each uh, esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and thing of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shall, or excuse me, you, uh, whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. Uh, him therefore I hope to send presently, as soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord, that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, and companion in labor, and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all, and was full of heaviness, because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I set him therefore the more carefully, that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply you your lack of service toward me. And that's Paul speaking there. So amen. And that's the entirety of uh, chapter 2 there. So now let's go ahead and uh, turn on the power here and do the scripture song from Philippians 2, 13. And yesterday was Philippians 3, 13 through 14. So, amen. All right, so let me get there. And we'll sing this scripture song and then get into the topic for today. So today is the 27th. All right, so let me get there. Here we go. Philippians 2.13 For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's right. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is God. It is God.
right, so we'll put that aside there and do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic for Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. But let me go ahead and give you all the times that we went through these messages here, starting with the very first one, which was back in November on a Friday, and this was November 17th of 2023. It's when we started these series of messages, and it was titled, A Look at the Master, The Grand Question. And these have been all written by Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio. So that's the first uh, message there from this series of messages, A Look at the Master. And then the second one was on the 24th of November, which was a Friday also. And this was A Look at the Master, The Conflicted. So that was another one. And then that was the second one there. And then the third one. Third one here was... Let's see. The third one was on the 7th of December. And that was on a Thursday. It was titled A Look at the Master, The Sign Seekers. And so that was on the third one. And then the fourth message was on the 14th so the fourth message was on the 14th and that was a thursday and it was titled they look at the master of the brotherhood so that was the fourth one on the 14th of december of last year so that was the fourth one and then the fifth one the fifth one was on the 28th and that was on a thursday a look at the master and recognition so that was the uh, fifth one and so that was the fifth one there. And then the sixth message was at the end of January, I believe, was the sixth uh, message here. So let me go there, the sixth message from this series, which was on the 30th. And it was a Tuesday, and this is a sixth message. Uh, look at the master awake. So that was the sixth message. And then the seventh message was... Seventh message was on the 6th of uh, this month, February 6th, which was a Tuesday. And that was the seventh message, a look at the master at your house. So that was the seventh one. And then we had one on the 8th, which was a look at the master, three levels of quarries. So that was the 8th message on the 8th of February. And that was the, that one. And then the ninth message was on the 11th of this month, a look at the master, the dysfunctional. So that was the ninth message. And then, let's see. And then the tenth message was on the 17th. And that was a look at the master, a rebuke of carnality and covetousness. So that was the tenth message. And, and then that gives us uh, the eleventh here on the 20th. And that was a look at the master recognition. So that was on the 20th of this month. And then... Uh, and then we had one on the 22nd, which was a look at the master, why trouble him? So that was the 12th message. And then today will be the 13th message, if I counted correctly. So 13th message and final message from this series, a look at the master, titled, subtitled, Those on Our Side. And we have two passages here, Mark 9.38 and Luke 9.49. It says, John, Master, we saw one. And then Luke, that's Mark 9, 38. And then Luke 9, 49 says, Master, we saw one. And so well, hopefully he explains this in the passage here, or in the um, topic here today, the message. And this is from Brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times, Day Heights, Ohio, is the author today. So, all right, so let's go ahead and... Um, get some uh, context here it says that these were when the disciples were uh, casting out devils so let's look at these here in mark and luke so mark 9 first let's go there and get a quick glance glance at this so mark mark 9 that's the first one here so mark 9 and verse 38 so let's see here all right, so 38. So 38 starts out here. It says, um, and John answered him. So he's answering uh, 
Jesus here, I believe. Um, it goes back here to verse uh, 33. It says, and he came to Capernaum. Um, that's Jesus. And being in the house, uh, he asked them, what was uh, it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. So they were disputing amongst themselves who should be the greatest. And then Jesus is telling them who is who would be the greatest. And then all oh, that's going on. And then verse 38, And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not, uh, followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, and because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And so on and so forth. So um, all the way down to the end of the chapter there. So that was that one. And then Luke 9. Let's go to Luke 9 and verse 49. And 49, it says again, um, this is again, they were um, disputing about who would be the greatest. And then um, another one of these, and John answered and said, Master, we saw one cast casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us so again it's the same thing there in both of these passages so amen all right now let's get into the topic here a look at the master those on our side and brother tim green writes he says the disciples saw someone casting out devils and it wasn't any of them the story says so they stopped him jesus reply was a mid or excuse me a mild rebuke to his closest followers, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us, right? Uh, this conversation could apply to the attitude we should have toward other believers that go to a Baptist church in our town or to a church not of our faith that preaches the gospel, right? So if they're preaching the gospel, we shouldn't be against them. And uh, amen, even though they might have some things wrong and not everything correct. If they're preaching the gospel, we should not um, attack them and all that stuff. So, all right. And he continues on. He says, yes, there are still a few of those churches that aren't Baptist that still preach the gospel and preach the truth. So, amen. Uh, often people get this attitude within the confines of the church they attend and worship in. Right? So, they're thinking you might be a Baptist and you'd be like, well... You can't be saved unless you're a Baptist. <laughs> well, you can be saved out of any religion. I mean, if another church, whether it be a Methodist church or or a, um, or a Lutheran church or whatever, and they're preaching the gospel and preaching the truth, that it's through Jesus Christ alone that you can have eternal life. Um, well, praise the Lord. And we shouldn't be against them. And we shouldn't think that Baptists are the only ones out there sharing the gospel. I mean, yeah, most of it is um, Baptist churches um, doing that. And... Uh, um, but we're, um, that's just a denomination, and we're supposed to be Bible-believing Christians first before we are Baptists, right? So, I might go to a Baptist church, but the only reason I go to a Baptist church is because my pastor preaches and teaches the truth of the Bible. <laughs> so, and if he didn't, I'd go find another church. <laughs> I mean, you know, so same thing with you. If your pastor isn't teaching the truth of God's Word and um, uh, plain truth there out of the Bible and stuff, then... You find a good Bible-believing church, and most of those churches are Baptist churches these days, but there are other churches out there that do preach the gospel and getting people saved, so we shouldn't be against them, and we shouldn't think that it's just all Baptists that do do it all. There is other people out there that go out there and share the gospel with people and tell them how to be saved through Jesus Christ alone, and, and amen. So uh, we shouldn't get this attitude uh, where it's just you doing it all. Because there are others out there, and there's other churches that might not be Baptist churches, um, and it might be a Lutheran church, might be a, a pastor at a Lutheran church, or pastor at a Methodist church, or pastor at a um, <laughs> even a um, Catholic church. You know, preaching the truth and telling people about Jesus and Jesus alone, and trying to get them saved and tell them the truth. So, and Amen. 
All right, so again, it says, Often people get this attitude within the confines of the church they attend and worship in. You know it is not a criminal offense if someone sings the same uh, song as solo, duet, trio, quartet, and the, in church that you sing, right? It's not your song, right? Someone could take part of your Sunday school class as it grows and split uh, it up and have two. It's not a capital offense. So, uh, so what if the preacher doesn't uh, ever ask you to fill the pulpit on Wednesday night or lead in prayer? Grow up, <laughs> right? Stop being a little baby and murmuring because you can't do something certain in the church and say you can't get behind the pulpit and preach because your um, pastor says no I don't want you to do that or lead in prayer um, but he says you can go down to the nursing home and preach down there so we need to grow up and stop being so childish amen <laughs> have you ever considered that all truly born again Christians are on the same team so to speak and we sure are we shouldn't be fighting against one another and biting and devouring one another. Amen. Uh, John the Beloved has a few pertinent things to say on the subject. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 1 John 4, 11, verse 12 says in part, If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hey, if you see someone witnessing and passing out tracts or singing his praises and preaching his word, the master said, forbid him not. Amen. So, and we all take turns uh, preaching the gospel when we're out on the street and handing out tracts and, and uh, so and witnessing. So we should all be in it together. Amen. And be in these things together and not uh, um, being against uh, one another. If, um, say, you can't sing in a song or whatever and you can't be part of the um, sun Sunday school class or whatnot and uh, amen uh, learn to grow up and and do what you gotta do amen and there's many things that each one of us does in the church house and around the church so and praise the Lord for that all right that was a good topic today to end this uh, series of messages a look at the master those on our side so if they're on our side let's be for them and not against them amen and hallelujah all right so that's the end of the pep to spread topic for today and good topic there and now let's go ahead and get into the daily strength volume 2 book as we are continuing this week on bitterness and this is week four and yesterday was uh, titled what is bitterness and today is day 24 tuesday a Root of Bitterness, and this book is written by Douglas D. Stauffer and Andrew B. Ray. And so let's go into this topic here, A Root of Bitterness. And it says in Hebrews 12, 15, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, let, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby uh, many be defiled, and so on and so forth. And the rest of Hebrews 12, and I encourage you to read all of that chapter there to get the rest of the context to this chapter chapter 12 and so let's read the introductory thoughts it says bitterness grows from within a man much like the root of a plant sure does if left alone to fester bitterness will eventually spring up and when it does it will trouble you unfortunately bitterness is not frequently identified during its infancy it hides inside the individual with little evidence of the of its existence as time passes our enemy the world the flesh and the devil feed that bitterness and it begins to spring forth as it does it may bring, begin to alarm or even shock us for instance we may yell at someone for no apparent reason uh, something insignificant can even ruin our entire day right if we are not careful we can grow increasingly comfortable with our newfound trouble and attitude mm, that's the truth right <clears throat> as alluded to in the scripture 
The solution for bitterness can be likened to the removal of a plant by its roots. Bitterness continues to grow unless removed at its source from the roots. Amen. All right, so that was the introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. It says, Joseph's brothers were jealous of him. One day they saw him coming, and just the sight of him made them angry inside. This is bitterness. They planned to kill him, but instead sold him into slavery. And that can go for both children and adults. You see um, a brother in Christ coming along, and you get jealous of them because they're doing um, more than you're doing. But you can do more too. You know, you might not choose to do more. Or maybe they're doing something that you would like to do, but you can't do for some reason. Or, or maybe um, uh, like preaching behind the pulpit or something, or, or uh, something specific. Well, there's always something you can do, so you shouldn't be bitter and grow angry because they're doing um, something that you're um, not to do or can't do, and do what you can do for the Lord. And then as the pastor and the leaders can trust you again, they'll perhaps allow you to do more. <laughs> Amen. So, all right, so that's that. And now for everyone, devotional thoughts for everyone, it says bitterness often finds its root in one or a couple of uh, incidences, uh, what is the root of your bitterness? Do you remember the time when anger began festering in the depths of your heart? Have you ever pulled a plant up on the surface only to have it grow back? That this is like bitterness. We may fix the current issue, but the problem will not be solved until the root is completely removed. <laughs> right? That is the truth right there. So let's Remove that root of bitterness. Uh, so now prayer thoughts. It says ask the Lord to keep bitterness from growing inside of you. And then ask the Lord to help you find the root of any bitterness that continues to trouble you. So amen. And then the song from the hymn book. Which will be the first one we do today. It's titled If I Thy Spirit Grieve. So that will be the first hymn. And then we'll do the first hymn which would have been the... Uh, so this would have been the second hymn and then the other one would have been the first hymn but we're going to do it backwards so we'll let this one be the first hymn and then the second one be the or the first one will be the second hymn all right so let's go ahead and put that aside and we'll get into the hymns now so this first hymn and we'll be doing this hymn again here in about a week or so um, because it's coming up here again soon because this is uh not too far down the road so this is going to be hymn 677 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is uh, the Repentance of the Saint, one of these hymns, a spiritual song. And um, this is titled, If I Thy Spirit Grieve, hymn 677. And this is written by John uh, Dracup, that's D-R-A-C-U-P, Dracup, uh, 1723 to 1795. It's a long time ago. And then Henry J. Uh, uh, gauntlet and he lived from 1805 to 1876 and there is a little story here at the bottom so let's uh, press play here and listen to it first and then go from there so here we go Try it. <clears throat> Lord, if in me one sin doth live, which doth thy holy spirit grieve, open it now, remove, now make. Though I in 
darkness wandering go, yet my dear Lord doth all things know. He knows this heart of mine. Oh, that one ray of heavenly light might pierce the gloomy shades of night and through my darkness shine. Amen. Dear Lord, the piteous object see, in helpless grief I mourn for Thee. Mourn that I cannot mourn, grieve that I cannot grieve aright, not love my, nor love my God with all my might. Great Prince of Love, thy power in art, remove this adamantine heart, dissolve it into love, and fruits of holiness shall grow, I shall be dead to things below. And seek the things above. Amen. That was a little challenging hymn there, but uh, still good. All right, so let me give you the story here at the bottom. Read this to you. It says, This aged and much esteemed servant of Christ finished his course with honor and tranquility in the latter end of May 1795. And on the day his funeral was uh, preached, his uh, aged uh, widow also expired. They had lived happily together for a long course. And that's uh, John Rippon that said that, wrote that. So, amen. All right, now the uh, reference is here. In stanza 1, we have Ephesians 4.30 and then Ephesians 4.31-32. Stanza 2, we have Jeremiah 17, 10, and Hebrews 4, 12, and 1 John 2, 8 through 11. Stanza 3, we have one reference, which is Deuteronomy 6, 5, and then stanza 4 is Hebrews 3, 13, Galatians 5, 22, and Romans 6, 11. So that is uh, that hymn, and then we're going to go back to this hymn, which would have been the first hymn for today. We're going to make it the second hymn. And let me go find the instrumental, because I know there's an instrumental for this one. It's, uh, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. So let's see. Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Okay. This other one was. Alright. We'll do this one. Oh no, we'll do this one. Because this one I think is a little longer. Alright, so turn this down here. In okay, case so there's ads. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Through these ads here. All right, turn this back up. Okay, put that aside there. All right, so this is a uh, hymn 664, and this is another one of these, the Trust of the Saint hymns, a spiritual song. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. It sure is. This is written by Louisa. M.R. Stead, 1850 to 1917, 
And then William J. Kirkpatrick, 1838 to 1921. And there's a story with this one also. So let me press play and we'll get started here. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise Just to know, thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I prove him o'er and o'er Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust him more Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus Just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me Neat the healing, cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I prove him o'er and o'er Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. And just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee. Precious Jesus, save your friend, and I know that thou art with me. Well, be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. So that is the hymn, and now let me read you the story here at the bottom. It says, Louisa immigrated to the United States as a young adult living in Cincinnati, Ohio. There she mis uh, married Mr. Stead, and the two were blessed with a daughter named Lily when the daughter was but four years old while vacationing at New York's Long Island uh, Sound, Mr. Stead responded to the peril of a drowning young lad as beloved wife and daughter watched both Mr. Stead and the boy drowned. This crisis of faith uh, birthed these lines shortly thereafter the widow traveled with her daughter to South Africa, serving as a missionary for a decade and a half. In this time, she remarried to a Mr. Uh, Wood, Woodhouse, W-O-D-E, House, Woodhouse. Uh, the family returned to America due to Louisa's health in 1895, but soon re-entered the mission field in 1900, arriving at the mission in South uh, Rodessa, she penned uh, with simple confidence and trust we may induce uh, say our sufficiency is of god upon her passing a friend noted we miss her very much 
but her influence goes on as our 5,000 native Christians continually sing this hymn in their native tongue. Amen and hallelujah. So as the story behind the hymn here. And now let me give you the references and then we'll move back on to the scripture songs. So stanza 1, we have Ephesians 1, 13 and 1 John 5, 13. Stanza 2 is Romans 3, 25 and Revelation 1, 5. Stanza 3 is Galatians 5, 16 and Romans 14, 17. And then stanza 4 is 1 Peter 2, 6 through 7 and Hebrews 13, 5. And then one reference for the refrain and that's Luke 17, 5. So amen. All right, so that is it for today's hymns. And now we put that aside and we'll grab the scripture song book and do the scripture songs again. And then we'll wrap it up after that. So yesterday was the 26th and Philippians 3, 13 through 14. And this is a really good one here. All right. Let me get to this one. Here we go. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, Brethren I, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brethren, to have apprehended But this one thing I do but This one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind And reaching forth unto Those things which are before I press toward the mark I press toward the mark Prize of the high calling of God, I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, brethren, press toward the mark. Press toward the Amen. Now today's one more time. Philippians 2.13 Philippians 2.13 For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Here we go. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Okay, so um, there is 29 days in this month, but he doesn't have a scripture song for the 29th day. For some reason, he didn't include that in uh, the scripture song uh, for this month. So uh, tomorrow would have been the last day for this month um, normally, but uh, we have a leap year every, um, I think it's like four or five years, a leap year. I believe that's uh, how it works. So um, we'll, what we'll do is... Um, 
on the leap year day. We'll go ahead and we'll do all the scripture songs on the leap year day since there's no particular scripture song for the 29th. And we'll just go through all of them and just sing all of them for the month. And and usually I do like favorites, but we'll just um, go ahead and try to do all of them or pick uh, favorite ones. But uh, we'll see what happens um, there since uh, there'll be extra time on the 29th to do that. Um, should be. And it might be a little longer, but we're going to... We're going to do it. Amen. All right. So tomorrow, the 28th, which would have been the last day for this month normally. And Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 is the scripture song. And it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, amen. All right. So that's uh, tomorrow's scripture song. And then on the 29th, we'll just go ahead and... Um, make it uh, extra time to do uh, either do some favorites or just go through all of the scripture songs for the whole entire month again and do it that way. So, all right, so that's that. And then the Baptist bread for tomorrow is going to be titled um, for Wednesday, February 28th. It's titled A Double Tongue. And the author is Brother Rick Gravely. And this is James 3.10. And I believe that he has done other messages on the tongue. I'm going to have to look and see. I think this might be probably the third one here. Um, got to go back and look and find out. But I do recall him uh, doing messages on the tongue um, not too long ago. So this might be another one of those messages. But it is titled A Double, uh, a, a double Tongue. And this is for Wednesday, February 28th, James 3.10. And Brother Rick Gravely is the author. So, amen. All right. So, that's tomorrow's Baptist Bread. And then the Scripture uh, Daily or daily Strength uh, book, Volume 2. There is no topic for tomorrow, but there is a passage. So, we'll read the passage and then read some more Fight On stories uh, tomorrow. Since it's um, Wednesday, church night, and it's day 25. And Jeremiah 4.18 is the passage. As we continue through this topic of bitterness for this week. And so that's that uh, tomorrow for the um, Daily Strength. And then the More Fight On Stories book. This is the cover to that book here. And we'll do some stories here. Um, as I was saying, there's a bunch of quotes here. So we have here on 152, uh, we have a passage here from Psalm 20, verses 7 through 9. And then the first story is titled Singing in the Rain. So that's the first story there. And then on pages 154 and 155 and 156, we have some quotes from different people here. The first quote is from John Adams, urging the Continental Congress to approve the Declaration of Independence. So that's the first quote. And then the second quote on the next page, page 155, is uh, says here, at the dedication of Samuel Adams' memorial in his church. So that's uh, that uh, their dedication of Samuel um, Adams. And then the final quote here is from George Washington on page 156. And so that's that. And then the second story will be titled More Than a Bridge. So that's the uh, second story. And then, and then let's see here. So that'll be the second story. And then we'll do a third story here. Um, we have... Uh, this um, little quote here at the ra uh, the rallying cry during the war for independence. So that's a little quote there on 159. And then the final story for tomorrow will be one man versus a battalion. So those will be the three stories along with these quotes and uh, stuff here. So amen. All right. So that's from the More Fight On Stories book. Let's to cover that. And then only one hymn for tomorrow. So this one hymn is titled My High Tower. And this does kind of sound familiar. And I think that Brother Alltop has a um, version of this uh, hymn here, I believe. If it's the right one, if I'm thinking of the right one here, My High Tower. And this is another one of these, The Trust of the Saint Hymns, 665. And this is written by Philip P. Bliss. Amen. So, and there is a story down here at the bottom. And 
So we'll put that there. And this is the cover of the hymn book here, the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. That's the cover to it. And there's four, uh, there's three different uh, colors. And then there's a leather bound edition also of that hymn book there. And then the um, Daily Strength Volume 2 book. There's four volumes to this series of books. And this is Volume 2 that we're going through uh, this time around. And those books can all be found on MelodyPublications.com. It's the website. And then the More Fight On Stories book, um, along with other uh, books by Samuel or by Sam Gipp, is um, that's uh, DaystarPublishing.com. It's the website where you can get all his books. So, amen. And then the Scripture Song book. This is the cover um, for the Scripture Song book. And then the CDs are all available online, or should be, or you can contact Brother Dean about how to get those CDs and the book. And that's uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And that's uh, Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Poor Kaituma, Guyana. So continue to pray for them and his health and uh, what they're planning on doing next um, as far as the mission field and uh, if they're able to go back over there or not. And continue to pray for that mission field for those that have taken over the work while they're back here in the States and whoever decides to take that over full time. Uh, down the road pray for all that and uh pray for all missionaries around the world amen so that's their information and then the baptist bread uh devotional book this is from january and february and february is almost over we have two more days left of february so you'll uh get the book uh the books for um march and april if you order now and that's uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org is the other website and there's other books available on that website to order if you go there and check that out and then the bible the king james bible the word of god this is the first book we should always be getting into and searching the scripture and showing ourselves approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and seeking god's face and going to him in prayer and asking him to guide you and direct you and show you the truth as you're studying it and all that and then have a good solid relationship with him because that's the most important relationship any of us can have is the one we have with Jesus and God the Father and all that and the Holy Spirit. So, amen. All right. And uh, then the other broadcast I do where I've been reading through uh, uh, Brother James's book on uh, Genesis and been going through the two floods. Did part one um, two days ago and yesterday did part two, which is on Peter's flood. And so today will be part three. And there's eight parts to this series of messages um, devotional topics so um, that'll be on the other broadcast there and you can watch all these broadcasts on either the facebook page if you're friends with me on facebook or if you're um, not or you know somebody that's not on facebook and wants to watch these um, you can direct them to the youtube channel by going to ambassador for christ broadcasting or typing in baptist bread broadcast and um, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i'm posting these up on the youtube channel so amen all right, well, um, that'll be about it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now. And again, apologize for the slow connection. Hopefully it didn't mess up the broadcast too much for you and be able to watch this in its entirety without any skips or anything in it. I'm not sure what to do about that. Uh, so just have to deal with it and uh, see what happens. Um, so amen. All right, see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.